If you do an online bank, online transaction on the e-commerce side, I use it a lot because I do a lot of e-commerce transaction. It's safer for me as a cardholder because if the service is not granted to me, I can always go back and do a chargeback and claim it back. What my colleagues were referring to are the unusual things which sometimes seems too good to be true or they have a lot of red flags. The fallback fraud. What is fallback fraud? All our cards have chip on it. But sometimes, maybe, sometimes the chip is broken or there's a problem. It cannot read it, so it will be swiped. There were businesses that were approached by criminals asking them when the business was already closed, so there was not a legitimate transaction, to try to pass maybe 20, 30 cards, and the ones that they will get an approval, then the merchant will get a commission from it. That's not a normal sales. And why? Because in principle, a bank will decline a transaction if it's outside of the country, if it is a fallback. So if it doesn't read your chip, you cannot do the transaction. But some banks still do not decline that. So they are looking for the possibility of getting from those stack of 20 cards to get one card or two or three that have the possibility that it is approved of uh, fraud. Another one is fraud that happened with key enter transaction. Another type of fraud that we are also seeing is the transfer funds back. So those are really the frauds that you can happen with credit cards. So if there is a normal sale transaction in between you and your customers, and it is secured because there is a chip on the card if the card is present, if the card is not present, you have e-commerce, then there is no problem. But it is when you have those red flags and when you have those exemption cases where you can have a problem.